standing in a little room at the end of my sawmill shed out of the wind. It's a windy day. Every log that you mill needs to have a decision made. Sometimes the log is perfectly straight, no taper, no decision to be made. This log has very little taper. It's a little over 12 feet long. Um, it's an inch in the difference. It's 18 inches at the operator end, 16 inches at, at the, the end that we're looking at now. I'll show you there. There we go. But it has a hook in it. It goes up on the end. The last foot and a half or two feet probably is up about two, two and a half inches. So the decision would be to be, should we just cut the log at 12 feet and get as much yield as we can? What I'm trying to get out of this log are two by sixes, or should I cut two feet off the end of it and get a better yield? Maybe not better, but more 10 foot two by sixes. So we have to look at the order that we have. How many of each do we need, the 12 foot and the 10 foot? And uh, I guess make a decision that way. So I've calculated it out. I've got more 10 foot logs than 12 foot logs. So I think I'm gonna use this hook, use the waste that's in there just as scrap. We'll run one straight cut through at the top of this, uh, probably 15 inches or something like that. And then we'll flip the log upside down, take another slab cut and see where that lies. It'd be nice to get 12 inch cant out of this log so that we can get as many two by sixes as possible. And it's possible that we'll get uh, a 12 inch cant out of it. That's my aim anyway. I'm gonna walk you up here. It's gonna be windy and just uh, be fair warned because it's blowing a gale here today and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about by that hook. So you can see if I back up here, how much that raises up at the end. And like I say, I could cut that off, uh, two feet off of that, and I would have a very straight, zero taper white pine log, about 10 feet long, and I'd be able to get some 10 foot two by sixes, but we need 12 footers. So we're gonna have to roll the dice, see what I can come up with for as much of a, a yield out of this log as possible with 12 foot material. So hopefully this will make sense to you once I get it opened up. All right, so the next thing to do is to figure out what, uh, I should be able to take a cut on the top of that and just take the, the highest part of the belly off and leave that hook down. So I'll get a maybe one or two, two by six, 10 footers, and then the rest will be all 12 feet. Hopefully this will make sense. So I'll come down to 14 inches and make a slab cut. The last one was 16. This, uh, this log, you don't need to clamp them now after, well, after, after they're sitting flat. It's not going to roll anywhere. 
and it's not certainly not going to uh, be pushed around by the blade that's for sure so we'll open that up once we get a couple of flat sides then I'll roll it up on 90 degrees you'll see it'll make sense here in a minute I've got 12 inches from the deck to the top of the blade that last cut and that's a pretty good surface actually the knock blisters aren't too bad in that so I'll raise my backstops and the backstops will give me a perfect 90 degrees perpendicular to the bunk or to the blade and then I'll roll that log up and uh, take a next cut
log uh, yielded pretty well. Very happy with how much lumber I got out of that. And I said before, but that decision that you make initially to determine what the best yield is going to be of that log is going to change for every log, depending on the defects, big sweeps in it, or the swelled butt possible. Who knows what you got to cut off of that. I always stage the mill for the next log. So I put my backstops up, move my log clamps over, and I'm already thinking about what the next yield will be. Kind of exciting to get these logs in. And uh, I think for me, this little mill, making dimensional lumber isn't particularly my favorite thing to do. I like doing it. It's uh, a lot of fun to do. My favorite is custom milling. Somebody that has a, a 200 year old host and they've got a, a piece of beam or a board that you just can't buy at the hardware store. That's that's the kind of thing that I like. That gets me up in the morning, of course. So I just changed over blades. I bought on a whim five wood miser double hard blades. And just as an experiment, basically, everybody brags about these wood miser blades. Now I've had good luck with uh, Ripper 37 blades. I've had amazing luck and service with Hackinson blades. Hackinson blades I can buy locally. They're, uh, there's a shop in Bridgewater, which is half an hour from here, and I can buy them. They bring them in. I don't have to pay. I think they have to absorb some shipping. I pay a little shipping when I pay a little extra with, with the price of the blade. But they're an inch and a half blade, 158 inches long, and the whole tooth is hard, which means I can get a whole lot of sharpening cycles out of that, out of that blade. So I've got some blades that I've sharpened them eight times, no joke. That's the Hackinson blade, and they still cut great. I'm getting, you know, four or 500 board feet. It's hard to tell because there's so many variables. If there's dirt in the logs or if the species is harder. Right now I'm milling frozen logs, so um, it might be a little harder on, on the logs. These double hard blades are 10 degree hook. My Hackinson are seven degree. They, uh, the Hackinson seem to, they sound smoother when they cut. Um, I would say that these wood miser blades are comparable to the Ripper 37. Ripper 37 has got a little bit more hardened metal on them. Um, I've never broken a Hackinson blade, but I have broken a lots of Ripper 37s. And I think it's my own fault because I sharpen them probably more than they need to be sharpened or more than they, the life of them. But I run them till they're done. And then when they get bad, I put them aside, and save them for a muddy log. And then I know I can throw it out with the, uh, without feeling like I've wrecked a blade. So, or if I suspect there's metal in a, in a tree, if there's an oak tree or something like that, an oak log with a big black stain on the end of it, I'll use one of those old blades for that. So between those three blades, I think my favorite's still the Hackinson. They're the most expensive to buy, but they're the cheapest to run if you can get as many life cycles out of them. I haven't sharpened any of these Woodmiser blades yet. I do have a 10 degree stone uh cbn wheel i should say and i'm gonna see how many sharpenings i get out of those but i suspect i'm only gonna get two three four at the most um but this blade here has got uh i think i just have just over 400 board feet on this blade still cutting good so i'm not going to change it until it starts to wave just a little tiny bit i can tell by the sound there's a specific ring that uh that this blade or these blades make um not a not a metal on metal ring because you, you hear all of that business because of the metal blade hitting them the metal wheels and the band wheels and that kind of stuff this is more of a of a of a bell ringing that's it's hard to describe well someday i'll i'll see if i can't put a microphone somewhere near the near the saw head that the engine won't pick up a bunch of noise anyway we'll see how that all works but you'll know what i mean but you, the sound is what i look for i also look for the rooster tail of sawdust that comes off um, when it starts, the sawdust starts looking like flour. I know that the, the saw's not cutting so well. If there's a whole lot of sawdust left on the board, I'm either going too slow or the gullet is getting filled up, which means it's not cutting well enough, which is possible. That little gullet in the tooth, the little circular part inside from the cutting, the top of one cutting edge all the way around to the, the start of the next cutting edge, that's what evacuates the sawdust out of that cut. So if you've got sawdust left on there, then uh, then the set is getting off or or something like that. I bet you the wind is messing, wreaking havoc with the sound. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here. This is uh, Saturday morning logging, um, the forestry operation of the log father. So uh, I do this a little bit almost every day, but um, I just enjoy doing it. I come up, I'll cut a few logs. I'll make a little money doing this today. 
I'll make a cord of wood some days. Some days I'll do a little welding or fabricating for somebody, or I'll um, build an engine. Built a lot of engines in my career over the years. So, anyway, that's it for for now. Log farther out.